All right, we begin here with our big story. Primary voting is set to start just hours from now in New Hampshire as Nikki Haley takes on Donald Trump head to head for the first time. The former president coming off a landslide victory in Iowa last week and then just yesterday, he won the endorsement of his once bitter rival, Ron DeSantis, who suspended his presidential campaign. The latest polling average from our partners at 538 shows that Trump is still leading Haley by more than 10 points, even though she's been gaining ground in these recent weeks. And yesterday, the former South Carolina governor told our Rachel Scott that she is staying in the race no matter what happens tomorrow. If Donald Trump beats you Tuesday night by more than 10 points, is it game over? Are you heading to South Carolina? We're going home to South Carolina and we're going to crisscross the state that I love so much. So we're not we're not backing out anytime soon. All right, you heard it there. So joining us now for more on tomorrow's high stakes primary is New Hampshire Republican Party Chairman Chris Egger. So thank you so much for being here with us. We appreciate your time. And look, she's showing confidence, as are you. You recently said that Nikki Haley, quote, could absolutely defy polling and beat Donald Trump. What gives you that kind of confidence? What about her campaign speaks to voters there in New Hampshire? Yeah, so so thank you, Kayla, for, for me being on. Uh, I appreciate it. In 2022, in our Senate primary, Don Boldock had a 10-point lead in all the polls except for one outlier. And on election night, he won by less than one percentage point. So, you know, you could say our margin of error is plus or minus 10 points. Uh, she also has been appealing to our centrist voters. And with her being the only option against Donald Trump, she may draw more people than just people who support her. She'll draw people who are doing an anti-Trump vote. So she possibly could win. The electricity for Donald Trump at his rallies, however, you know, kind of makes you think he's got the advantage and that the polling may be right. But stranger things have happened in New Hampshire. The Yankees up here, sometimes they just don't like to tell the pollsters who they're going to vote for. Stranger things have happened in New Hampshire. I, I like that. And, and then sentiment there that a vote for her could essentially be a vote against Donald Trump. And you talked about centrist voters, but let's talk about the undeclared voters. You know, we know that is a large part of the electorate uh, there in New Hampshire. More than 40% of registered voters are able to either uh, vote in the Republican or the Democratic primary. Uh, so, how do you think that these undeclared voters might shift their political path if it's now just Trump and Haley, no more Ron? DeSantis. So we have, again, that 40% undeclared, 30% Democrat, 30% Republican. Um, in 2016, that those undeclared voters uh, did very well for Donald Trump. Um, in 2024 now, we're not sure how they're going to break, uh, but it appears that they may break a little bit more towards Nikki Haley. Uh, but the base of Republicans appears to be more supportive of Donald Trump. We've had the system in place over 40 years that served us well. And I think we won't really know until the votes are counted tomorrow as to where these folks went. Um, it's going to be exciting. We know one place they're not going to go is for Joe Biden because he's not on the ballot. He basically bailed out of New Hampshire. So we will have more interest. And I'm expecting record turnout over 300,000 voters uh, tomorrow. That's right. The Democrats are looking forward to uh, the South Carolina uh, situation there after New Hampshire. But let's talk about this primary system that you just talked about. It has now been criticized by the Trump campaign, claiming that these registered Democrats change their parties to become undeclared voters and then vote against Donald Trump. So what is your response to that criticism? Or do you think that the system could work now against the former president this time around? Because it worked for him last time. Yeah. So, you know, as far as we're concerned, this system has been in place over 40 years. All of the campaigns knew that this was the way the system worked last year. No one complained to us uh, from any of the campaigns and said, you know, we don't think this is right. You know, a couple of days before the election to say, boy, maybe we should have changed the way uh, the votes are be able to be cast. I mean, like, no, that's not going to happen. Look, we run fair elections here level playing field. We don't try to shift the electorate to support one candidate over the other. And the system has worked. Democrat voters don't have a motivation to, to switch over either because they have a writing campaign with Joe Biden. They don't want to see him embarrassed, basically. That could happen. So the hardcore Democrats who might resort to trickeration, as we say, they're going to stay home and do a write-in for Joe Biden. So I think that concern is uh, misplaced. 
I'm not worried about that at all. And the other thing is, if you want to be president of the United States, you've got to appeal to more than just hardcore Republicans. You've got to appeal to a broad spectrum of voters. Many of those undeclared voters are Republicans who are concerned about their jobs, their teachers, who don't want to get crossways with the teachers union, their police officers, who don't want to be accused of bias if they give a ticket to somebody from the other party, their business owners, and they're just people who just want to live free or die. So, hey, we're going to leave it the way it is, let the chips fall where they may. It's been that way for over 40 years. Game on. Let's go get some votes tomorrow. I can tell that you're excited. Let's talk a little bit about policy here for a moment, if you can. When it comes to issues uh, like most Republicans nationally, uh, Republicans in New Hampshire, or at least the likely Republican primary voters, named immigration as the most important issue facing the country, with many saying that views on immigration have actually shifted since Trump first took office. Now, it's the day before voting. The Supreme Court has sided with the Biden administration. This vote now clears the way for federal agents to remove razor wire fencing installed by the state. How do decisions like that impact the voters there in New Hampshire? I think it's going to motivate our people to come out and vote. And they want to come out and vote for somebody who's going to beat Joe Biden. He's been an unmitigated disaster for the country, especially on the border. He's not enforcing border laws. And, you know, people say, why New Hampshire? You know, you're so far from the southern border. But the fentanyl that's coming across in containers and otherwise is making its way here. Almost every single family has been impacted in one way or another by fentanyl overdoses, uh, accidental overdoses. Uh, and it's enough is enough. We've got to work on the supply and the demand side. But right now, it looks like that border is completely wide open. It's hurting us economically because of the cost that we have to bear for that. It's also just not fair. Somebody waits in line, like my grandparents and, and a lot of my friends who are immigrants here, they waited in line, followed the law, and then they look at the South where people basically flaunt the law and come in and people say, wait, that's not fair. That's not America. We live by the laws. That's open for immigrants, but let's do it correctly so we can handle the people coming in and make sure when they come in, they can be cared for properly. They can get jobs and contribute to the great American dream that we have here and live every day. So it's it's kind of an insult to law-abiding citizens when you see millions of people walk across the border and then we foot the bill for their illegal actions. Huge issue here, especially in the general election, and I think it's going to be the downfall of the Biden administration. All right, the voice of the Republican Party there in New Hampshire, Chris Egger, thank you so much for your time on what I know is a busy, busy night for you. I want to bring our big story to our panel now. So joining us today is our ABC News contributor and SiriusXM radio host, Mike Muse, ABC News contributor and former Republican congressman for New York, John Katko, Democratic strategist, Alencia Johnson, and ABC News political director, Rick Klein. Thank you all so much for being here with us. And Rick, let's jump right in here. The most recent polling from the CNN and the University of New Hampshire had an 11-point mark between Trump and Haley, but that polling, you know, still accounted for DeSantis. So how does his dropping out of the race now affect the likely results for tomorrow? I mean, you know, the big question, where will his supporters go? Yeah, Nikki Haley has been gaining momentum, but the problem is Donald Trump has been getting bowling momentum as well. And most Ron DeSantis supporters are probably going to be more likely Trump supporters. The question is going to be on the margins, and I think Chris Ager is right that uh, it's about independent voters, that uh, moderate voters. Do they break to Nikki Haley? Do they vote at all? Because that's the way to cut into Trump's lead and is likely to be another victory for him tomorrow night. The question is how big? Now that certainly is the question, right? Alincia, some interesting headlines also coming out of New Hampshire this weekend, including Joe Biden not included on that New Hampshire primary ballot, as we just heard. Uh, the DNC has since declared the New Hampshire Democratic primary as, quote, meaningless. So after the DNC approved a new electoral calendar, then that makes South Carolina the first primary state for Democrats. So in your opinion, could that be a miscalculation here for the Democratic Party to sort of overlook New Hampshire? It's not that the Democratic Party is overlooking New Hampshire. The Democratic Party is paying attention to the rising majority of, of our base. It's actually the rising majority of the country and wanting to make sure that the first uh, the first state that is going to get to determine who the Democratic nominee is more of a reflection of the entire population. So New Hampshire will get its chance to go, but the Democratic Party is listening to its base. And so this is some of the political infighting about change. People are resisting a little bit of change, but I do hope and, and believe in the years to come, the elections to come, that hopefully things will smooth out a bit more. 
and of course, South Carolina, South Carolina was a huge turning point uh, for President Biden. And John, to you, what is the prognosis for the Republican Party going down to this two-person race before we've even reached Super Tuesday? It's really remarkable how quickly the field narrowed, and that can only benefit Haley in the long term. I'm not sure what's going to happen in the next few days in New Hampshire. But, you know, you keep hearing this argument from a lot of Republicans being concerned that Democrats are crossing over to vote for Republicans. The last time we had that happen, Ronald Reagan won in the landslide. So I think they should embrace that and embrace who's doing that. And they should wake up before it's too late because Haley's got the best chance of making sure there's a solid Republican win, not Trump. Trump's even in or slightly ahead in the polls with Biden. Haley's consistently close to double digits. They got to wake up. And her message certainly resonates in a better way with more moderate or independent yeah. voters. Uh, and Mike, to you, just two weeks ago, Chris Christie was saying, you know, Trump being the nominee shouldn't be a foregone conclusion here. But, I mean, his lead is massive. So at this point, is it one? All indications are, are leaning in that direction as Nikki Haley faces a critical challenge tomorrow. It's a, a state that she must win. She has to put a W upon the board if she wants to continue. Uh, in addition to that, just as Rick Klein mentioned, former President Trump is going up in the polls uh, just as well as Nikki Haley is too as well. Uh, people who are interested in voting Ron DeSantis, although he is out, are more than likely to vote for former President Trump. What I find interesting, since you mentioned Chris Christie, Kana, is that Chris Christie has yet to come out to endorse a candidate yet. More than likely, a, uh, some of Chris Christie's voters will more than likely vote for Nikki Haley. So it's been interesting that he's been on the sidelines and hasn't come out to make an endorsement yet. Right. Some people think that his endorsement, you know, isn't going to go over well because of his anti-Trump sentiment. So it'll be really interesting to see how this plays out. Mike, John, Alencia, and Rick, our thanks to you. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.